Hello ladies and gentlemen, Scared Before here bringing you another Minecraft World War II vehicle tutorial. In this tutorial we go ahead and build the Panzer 8 mouse. The Panzer Kampf Wagen 8 mouse was a German World War II super heavy tank completed in late 1944. It is the heaviest fully enclosed armored fighting vehicle ever built. Five were ordered but only two holes and one turret were completed before the testing grounds were captured by advancing Soviet military forces. These two prototypes underwent trials in late 1944. The completed vehicle was 10.2 meters long. 3.71 meters wide and 3.63 meters high, weighing 188 metric tons. The mouse's main armament was the corrupt designed 128mm KWK 44 055 gun, based off the 12.8cm Pac 44 anti tank field artillery piece, also used in the casemate type Yay Tiger tank destroyer, with a coaxial 75mm KWK 44L 36.5 gun. The 128mm gun was capable enough to destroy all allied armor fighting vehicles that in service some at range ex ranges exceeding 3500 meters or 2.2 miles. The mouse was intended to punch holes through enemy defenses in the manner of an immense breakthrough tank, while taking almost no damage to any components. Uh, unfortunately, the mouse uh, project kind of uh, failed due to the proving grounds being captured and pretty much at this point in time, really the tank wouldn't have made a difference, only five really being able to be built in with allied air superiority aircraft would have been the demise of this tank uh, very easily. But yeah, still a really interesting tank, um, a really well-known German tank, uh, even though it, only two were built and one of which didn't even have a turret. So very interesting that's such a popular tank, but I guess it just kind of goes to the wild ideas that Germany had and, you know, the world's heaviest tank, which is surprising considering the main battle tanks and stuff that we have today. And this thing is still the heaviest tank ever made in history. So crazy stuff here and um, definitely a beast of a tank. Now this is a redesign. I did a tutorial for this a very long time ago and it's been asked for for a very long time to redesign this tank. So I'm happy to finally, you know, get back on the train of, you know, finishing up this build or redesigning it as I've had a design for it quite, for quite some time. Um, anyways, let's go and take a look at the new design for it and see what we got going on here. Basically, starting off with, we have obviously the turret itself. As you can see, we have the 128mm main gun, and then we also have the coaxial 75mm gun, which is kind of crazy that it has a coaxial 75mm gun. You don't really see tanks with that big of a caliber gun as a secondary, so uh, kind of wild stuff there. As we uh, continue on to the turret, uh, obviously all the details here on the turret and all that fun stuff. On the back we have the external fuel tank, which was pretty typical for the mouse to have, and uh, just all the siding and all that kind of stuff. Unfortunately with the mouse, it really is a very lackluster and detailed type tank. It's very minimalistic, which uh, makes it easy to build, but at the same time does kind of you know hurt for me as a builder that loves the detail of stuff. Um, I did try to show some kind of uh, different bits and pieces here, uh, kind of like the siding, the edges here with a little bit of a polished and side to kind of get a little bit more texture and stuff as looking at some of the pictures of the mouse and stuff, those were basically weld lines and stuff like that. Obviously these are thicker than weld lines, but they kind of add a little bit more to the tank instead of it just being complete stone and kind of bland, I guess. So it gives a little bit more texture and, um, you know look so anyways that's pretty much it for this overview let's go ahead and move into the tutorial by beginning with our first layers layers zero and one all right guys going ahead and move into our first layers we're gonna be going ahead and starting off with layers zero and one for layer zero to go ahead and get started with here we're gonna go ahead and set up a basis for our tracks here in the ground for this very simply uh we're gonna go ahead and place down a row of one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve and 13 narrow brick blocks here in the ground. Now from that we can go ahead and then skip a five, space of five over so one two three four and five and then on our sixth block over we're going to go ahead and place down another row of narrow brick blocks here in the ground like so. And again we're going to take this all the way back like so and till we get to this something like looks like this. So basically we have two rows of 13 um, parallel to each other here with a space of five in between them. To go ahead and get started with, we're going to go ahead and pick our direction where we want our front of our tank facing. So we're going to have our tank facing this direction. So on this side here, we're going to place down a narrow brick slab, followed by a narrow brick stair, and then a narrow brick top slab coming off the back of the stair. We're going to go ahead and repeat the same process over here going toward the inside of the tank. So a narrow brick slab, stair, and top slab. And we're going to go ahead and do the same thing over here. Narrow brick slab, top slab, or stair, and then top slab coming off the stair. And same thing next to it, slab, 
stair, top slab. So again, real straightforward stuff there. With that out of the way, uh, we can go ahead and then take our uh, another brick slabs, and we're going to go ahead and go to the back here, and we're going to go and repeat the same thing. So two narrow brick slabs, like this, two narrow brick stairs, and two narrow brick top slabs here. Same thing over here, two narrow brick stairs, and two narrow brick top slabs. From this point here, we're going to take our stone uh, top slabs. We're going to go ahead and go from these narrow brick stairs here and place that a row of three across the back here of stone top slabs. And then going up to the front here, we want to go ahead and go to our stone half slab here and the space in between these two stone half slabs here. We're going to place down a row of three. And again, this is the front of the tank. Uh, right there is going to be the rear of the tank. We can then take our stone top slabs and place down rows of three of stone top slabs filling this whole space going all the way across to the back of the tank here. This is going to basically fill in the basis here of the tank and give you a nice solid uh, bottom to it. So all the way back to this point like so. Now with that done, we're going to go ahead and then grab ourselves a uh, set of shulker boxes. We're going to go ahead and place down a row of shulker boxes all the way along the inside here like so. And we're going to go ahead and go over here to this side and repeat the same thing. So a row of shulker boxes all the way along the side here like so. After that is all done, we're going to go ahead and then place down a andesite wall, shulker box, andesite wall, shulker box, andesite wall, shulker box, and basically this alternating pattern all the way down here until you hit this narrow brick slab. So we're just going to alternate these back and forth all the way, and we should end on an andesite wall, just like we started with. We're also going to take stone buttons, and on the tops here of these shulker boxes, we're going to place down stone buttons. Item frames also on the fronts here, these shulker boxes, and in those item frames, we're going to place down stone blocks, like so, to go ahead and make the road wheels here on the uh, ground level. And then over here, we're going to go and repeat the same process. So our end set walls, shulker boxes, alternating pattern all the way along the side here. Again, we should start and end with an end set wall. And again, our stone buttons on the top tier of the shulker boxes, item frames like this, all the way down and then stone blocks in those item frames just like this and after you have that done that is going to wrap up our track system and over here on the back all we're going to do here is we're just going to place down an iron trap door to rough this center stone top slab and for the front here we have nothing to touch so that right there is going to complete layer zero one here's what the basis of our tank should look like also one thing to mention too is if you are kind of limited on supplies here you can swap out the shulker boxes here behind these ones like this all the way down for uh, stone blocks as they won't be seen so again if you are in survival and don't want to use all those shulker boxes you can do something like that at least that right there is going to wrap up layers uh zero one with that let's move on to layer number two all right guys moving on to our next layer we have layer number two for layer two to go ahead and get started with here we're going to take polished dance we're going to place down a row of two polished dance full blocks on top of these narrow brick top steps here in the front from this, we want to go ahead and take our stone, uh, or sorry, our polished andesite. We're also going to place down one more like this to both sides to kind of create an L shape here with our polished andesite. From this, uh, we want to go ahead and then actually change this real quick. So this is actually going to be a row of two stone blocks behind these polished andesite blocks. So my bad, two polished andesite blocks and then two stone blocks. Around the polished andesite blocks on the front here, we're going to place down two stone buttons and then one to the side. Same thing over here. Like that to both sides. We then want to take our andesite walls, we're going to place down a row of three across the middle here between those stone blocks and then uh, some skeleton skulls on both sides there. After that's done we're going to go ahead and take our stone blocks and we're going to go ahead and run them along the side here. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, and 14 blocks back. Same thing over here. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, and 15 stone blocks back. We're going to go ahead and place down a stone upside down stair right here on both sides. Coming off the side of the stone upside down stair, we're going to place down a dark oak with sign like so. We're going to go ahead and place down a gray shulker box on its side. Again, same thing on both sides here with a stone button over the shulker box like so. Now at this point here, we can go ahead and then take stone and fill in the space all in the middle here to go and completely uh, solidify the inside here. This tank does have plenty of room for interior, so if you do want to add interior and that's something you like to do, then you'll have plenty of opportunity with the interior of this tank as it's so big. But for the sake of the tutorial, we're just going to go ahead and fill this in completely with stone just to kind of close it off. 
Um, again, you can leave this for the most part hollow, except for behind these three inside walls, we do want to place down three stone pole blocks to close that area off. Uh, but for the rest of it, we can go ahead and just completely fill this in with stone to create a nice um, full base here. Also on the sides here, we're going to go ahead and go to the stone uh, block right here. We're going to place that in a skeleton skull that comes off of it, end rod, and then an air skeleton skull like that. Over here, same thing, like so. For the side, a uh, little ladder up to the top of the tank. Um, when we get to this point, we're going to go ahead and take our nerve stairs. We're going to place down row two of nerve brick stairs on top of those two top slabs. And in the middle space here, we want to go ahead and grab ourselves stone stairs. We're going to place down a row three of stone upside down stairs. A skeleton skull in the middle. We're then going to go ahead and grab ourselves an item frame and a tripwire hook. We're going to place down an item frame, turn off these two stairs, and a tripwire hook rotated so it's facing downwards, like so, for the back here for these little toe hooks. And with that all complete, that is going to wrap up what we have here for layer number two. Here's what it looks like from up above here pretty straightforward stuff and all that. Anyways, that's it for layer two. Let's go ahead and move on to our next layer, layer number three. Alright guys, moving on to our next layer, we have layer number 3. For layer 3, to go ahead and get started with here, we're going to place down a polished anosite slab here on the polished anosite blocks in the corners here, followed by a stone slab going in toward the middle like so. We then want to go ahead and go back from this polished anosite slab with a full block, and then we're going to take our stone blocks, and we're going to place down a row of 5 across the middle space like so, just like that. We then also want to place down a stone button, turn off the sides here of these polished anosite blocks to both sides like so. From this, we're going to go ahead and take our stone blocks, we're going to place down a row of 7 across, stone buttons here on both sides and then we want to go and then take our stone blocks and run a row of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, and 15 stone blocks back same thing over here row 15 all the way back and then we can go ahead and close this space off like so and we can go ahead and just completely fill the space in again you can leave it open if you do want to do interior but for the tutorial we're going to go and fill this in And just like that, we have it all filled in. So uh, we then want to go ahead and go to the sides here where our skeleton skulls are. We're going to place down two skeleton skulls up from them and rod across in between them. So same thing we were doing in the previous layer, just kind of building that up one more. Then on top of these narrow brick stairs, we're going to place down two polished anosite blocks, like that to both sides. And in the middle space, we're going to take our stone blocks and place down a row of three. Come off those three stone blocks, we're going to place down a row of three of stone top slabs. With uh, that all complete, uh, that is going to pretty much wrap up what we have here for this layer. Here's what an overview of it looks like. As you can see, again, very minimalistic and straightforward. That right there is it for layer 3. Let's move on to layer number 4. Alright guys, moving on to our next layer, we have layer number 4. For layer 4 to go ahead and get started with here, we're going to go ahead and take our polished anosite stairs. We're going to place a polished anosite stair on top of the stone block here to both sides. Turn off this polished anosite of uh, stair, we're going to place down an item frame with a snowball in the item frame like so for the front headlights. In this space across in between these stairs, we're going to take through five uh, stone slabs and place them across like so. We then want to place down a polished anosite full block to both sides and a row of three, or sorry, row of five of stone full blocks across the middle. From this, we're going to take our polished anosite, we're going to run a row of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, and twelve polished anosite blocks back. Same thing over here, a row of twelve going back like so. Now when we get to this point here, uh, between this la these last blocks here, we're going to place down a row of stone full blocks across like so. And in doing so, we can basically go ahead and fill in the remaining. Now we do need to make sure that some of this is filled in, so for the parts that do need to be filled in, I'm going to cover this here shortly. So uh, we have the row of five of stone here, we're going to place down a second row of five, a third row, a fourth row. Now when we get to our fifth row, uh, we do actually have something a little bit different. So we will be going ahead and grabbing ourselves a black concrete block. We're going to place it down here in the middle, and then we want to place down two stone blocks to both sides like so. And then we want to go ahead and place down one more additional row of five. Now at this point right here, this is what is required to have filled in uh, for the outside of the tank. The rest of it you can leave open for interior, but like I said before, <laughs> we're just going to fill this in completely to close this off. But again, that's all you need if you are plan on uh, doing it in here. Anyways, uh, once we get to this point, we're also going to go ahead and place down a stone button, come off this polished anosite block here in the front, and same thing over here. Then back for our skeleton skulls here, we're going to place down two more going up, and rod across in between them. Same thing over here on this side, like so. 
Once that's done, uh, we want to go ahead and then grab ourselves a light gray shulker box. We're going to place it on its side like so. Same thing over here. We're going to place down a black concrete block here in the middle. Two stone blocks to the sides. We want to go ahead and then place down another black concrete block here in the middle. Again, two stone blocks to the sides. And this time a polished anisite block to the very outside. And then on the back here, uh, we're going to very simply just place down a polished anisite stair to both sides. A stone stair. And then we want to go ahead and grab ourselves andesite walls and place down a row of three of andesite walls across. We're going to place down a stone block in the middle here, a light gray shulker box to both ends, and a row of three of um, andesite walls across. We're also going to grab a stone button, and on the top tier of these shulker boxes, we're going to place down a stone button on both sides. From this point, we're going to go ahead and grab ourselves a item frame. We're going to place down an item frame on this polished andesite stair, a dark oak wood sign over it, and then we want to go ahead and just very simply place down a red stained glass full block in that item frame like so. After that's all done, that is going to wrap up what we have here for uh, layer number four for the build. As you can see, we pretty much have the hole complete and we're gonna go and start moving into the layers for the turret and basically the top portion of the hall for all the detailing. But this is what it looks like so far. And that right there is going to wrap this layer up. With that, let's move on to our next layer, layer number five. All right guys, moving on to our next layer, we have layer number five. For layer five, to go ahead and get started with here, we're gonna go ahead and place down a skeleton skull on top of this stone block over here on the left side, and then a uh, dark oak wood button over here on the right side. From this, we're gonna go ahead and take our iron trap doors, we're gonna place down a row of three across, followed by a redstone repeater with the notches flicked back on both sides like this, and then an iron trap door coming off the redstone repeaters like that again to the outsides. We're gonna place down another iron trap door here, followed by a light gray banner coming off of it, and then in the corners here, we're gonna place down a skeleton skull at about a 45 degree angle. From this, we're gonna go ahead and go back with an iron trap door again on both sides. Dark oak wood sign coming off the sides here of these iron trap doors, like so. And in the middle space here, we're gonna go ahead and very simply just place down a rail like that. Now go out to the sides here, we're gonna place down two rails on those two polished anisite blocks. Same thing over here. And we wanna go ahead and then grab ourselves an end rod. We're gonna place down an end rod on top of these polished anisite blocks here on both sides for the start it will be the radio antennas. Once that's all done, uh, we're gonna go and then take our stone stairs. We're gonna place down a row of five of stone stairs going across. Actually, sorry, my bad, a row of three of stone stairs going across. And then we wanna take our stone top slabs. We're gonna place down two stone top slabs to the outsides, like so for the front there. After that, uh, we wanna go and then take our stone stairs. We're gonna place down a uh, row along the side here of upside down stairs. So we're going to go ahead and place down one, two, three, four, five, six uh, upside down stone stairs and then a stone upside down corner stair. Uh, we're going to go and do the same thing over here. So one, two, three, four, five, and six, and then a stone corner stair here, and then a row of one, two, three, four, and five across in between the corner stairs. Now, for the middle space here, uh, we do need to place down stone blocks in these corners, uh, but for the rest of it, uh, you don't really need to have filled in, you can leave it hollow. However, for the tutorial, we're gonna go ahead and just fill this in. So like I said, you do have a really good amount of interior space if you do wanna build an interior for this tank. Um, so you have plenty of room for that. Anyways, uh, on the back here, we're gonna take our stone top size, place down a row of seven, going all the way across here. We then wanna place down a rail on top of this black concrete block, and then one and two rails here, one and two, and then two dark oak wood buttons on top of those two stone blocks. And to finish this layer off, we're gonna place down a row of three of stone slabs on top of these uh, shulker boxes and stone blocks here on the back for the fuel tank. Anyways, that right there is gonna complete this layer. Here's what it looks like from up above. Pretty simple stuff. And so with that, we can go ahead and move on to our next layer, layer number six. All right guys, moving on to our next layer, we have layer number six. For layer six to go ahead and get started with here, uh, we're going to go ahead and go to this top section here. We're going to place down a stone full block on top of the stone upside down stair. And we're going to go ahead and then place down one, two, and three. Stone full blocks going forward, so you have a row of four. We then want to take our andesite walls. We're going to place down one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. Uh, polished ands or, uh, andesite walls going forward. We're then going to go ahead and go to our first stone block that we placed down here. We're going to place down one and two. One and two stone blocks to both sides, followed by a stone slab to the very outsides like that to go and finish it off. Coming off these, we're gonna place down two inside walls. 
to both sides and then come off the inside wall here on both ends we're going to place down a skeleton skull like that we then want to grab our stone slabs we're going to place down one two three four and five stone slabs going forward just like that for the 75 millimeter uh secondary gun actually my bed's only going to be four stone slab forward like that after that's done we're going to go and then take our stone slabs we're going to run them on the side here one two three four five stone slabs like this going back followed by two narrow brick stairs and then a stone slab again we're going to go ahead and go over here and do the same thing so one two three four five stone slabs two narrow brick stairs and a narrow stone slab and on this side i actually went ahead and placed down another two narrow brick stairs here this is basically just to show spare tracks mounted on the side of the turret these are kind of optional if you don't want them you can just go ahead and place down two stone slabs in their place uh, but they add a little bit more extra detail to the turret i think um, anyways, once that's done, uh, we're going to go then take our stone full box and we're going to go and place down a row along the side here of these narrow brick stairs and also stone slabs to fill that space in. And then on the back here of the turret, we're going to place down a stone slab full block, or a smooth stone slab full block right there in the middle. Stone uh, full block to both sides, and then a trip bar hook coming off the smooth uh, stone slab full block, and then a stone button there to the left side of it, like so for the back. And also on the side here, we actually want to go ahead and go to our middle stone block. So this is a row of nine of stone full blocks. We're going to go ahead and go to the middle one, the fifth one. And in its place, we're going to place down a stone slab. Same thing over here on this side as well. Now, from behind the stone slab, we're going to go ahead and want to grab black concrete and close the space off with black concrete. And we're going to go ahead and then take our stone full blocks and fill in the remaining space here inside the turret. If you are doing an interior, you can pretty much uh, not include the black concrete and you'll be fine uh, but for all of you guys that are not doing an interior for it it's best just to fill that in like so anyways that right there is going to complete what we have here for this area actually one last thing the uh, antennas we're just going to place down one more iron bar going up here on both sides anyways that right there is it for layer number six with that let's move on to layer number seven moving on to our next layer we have layer number seven for layer seven to go ahead and get started with here we're going to go to our iron bars here we're going to place down one more iron bar up on both sides from this, we want to go ahead and then place down a row of three of stone stairs across those stone full blocks, and then coming off these stone stairs, we're going to place down three skeleton skulls. We're also going to place down a iron trap door on the stone full block here in the middle. After that's uh, done, we want to go ahead and also place down a skeleton skull on both sides of, or on the one side of the stone full block, as we cannot fit one over there on that side. Uh, with that done, we're going to go ahead and then place down a stone slab that is going to go ahead and come off these stone stairs here and then going on back from the slab here we're going to place down one two three four five and if you are deciding to include the narrow brick stairs we're going to go ahead and place down one and two narrow brick slabs in its place over here two narrow brick slabs one two and three stone full block or stone slabs and then two narrow brick slabs so again kind of depends on what you're going for here and then for the top here, we're just going to take stone full blocks and fill in the space here in between our slabs, completely closing the top off of the tank like so. Um, the only exception being is we're going to be going ahead and going to the second to last row, placing down a andesite wall in the space like so, and then the fourth from the last wall, or space here, and we're going to place down a andesite wall in there as well, so it should look something like this here from the top. Then across the back here, we're going to place down three inside walls, and then a skeleton skull at a slight angle here to both sides, just like that. And once you have that all complete, that is going to do it there for this layer, layer 7. With that, we're going to move into our final layers, which are going to be layers 8, 9, and 10. We're going to do all the top details for the turret, finish our radio antennas, and pretty much call good. So with that, let's move into our final layers, 8 through 10. Moving into our last final layers, we have layers 8 through 10. For these layers, to go ahead and get started with, we're going to be going ahead and taking our iron bars, and we're going to go ahead and place down an additional three iron bars on top of what we've already created here for our iron bar uh, radio antennas. So, just the same thing going up on both sides like so. Then, focusing our attention here to the top of the turret, we're going to go ahead and start off by placing down an anisite wall in this location here, and then one over here on this side. We're going to go ahead and place down a dark liquid sign coming off the walls facing forward. We're going to go ahead and grab an iron frame, and also a black concrete block. We're going to place down an item frame, black concrete block on those for the uh, sites here for the top of the turret. After that, uh, we're going to place down a skeleton skull here to both sides, followed by a daylight detector on both sides like this, and we can also change the color to nighttime 
to kind of match the top of the tank a little bit better, the gray color. And then lastly, we're going to go ahead and place down a redstone repeater, which is not just spread apart like this, uh, behind those uh, daylight detectors. And when that's all complete, that is going to complete my redesign for the Panzer 8 mouse. Hope you guys do enjoy this new design for it and are able to put it to use. If you do end up using it, I do ask that you guys give me proper credit for it. This can be a thing from a sign of the build, to my channel, or this video if this does appear on your social media sites. Anyways, as long as you guys give me credit for it, your producer for projects you guys are working on, overall enjoy the build, have fun with it, and all that fun stuff. And that, thank you guys so much for watching. As always, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. This has been Gary 204, and I'll see you guys next time.